Welcome to the session, Participatory Pedagogies, Connecting with Students Through Open Practices. I'm Emily Decker-Bess, Global Librarian at the Savannah College of Art and Design, and with me today is my colleague, Jennifer Dickhoff, Head Librarian, Research, Instruction, and Access Services at SCAD. This session will highlight our use of open pedagogy practices. We will cover some background and theory, how this is practiced during a single library session, and conclude with some next steps for practice that can be applied to any course. There are many frameworks and theories out there defining open pedagogy practices. There are discussions around critical pedagogy and open teaching and how open education resources fit into it all. Today, we are just sharing one framework from Bronwyn Hegarty. Hegarty, once a principal lecturer in tertiary teacher education at Otago Polytechnic in New Zealand, defines eight attributes of open pedagogy practices. Although all of these attributes can be found in other types of pedagogies, it is the combination of them all that makes them unique. Additionally, they do not come in any order or level of importance, and they all overlap in many ways. Participatory technologies is focused on open technologies that allow for an extension of the classroom, the development of communities of practice, and give students freedom from the limits of traditional learning management systems. Attribute two is centered on people, openness, and trust. It is the cornerstone to many of the other attributes. It is essential for educators to build a trusting and supportive environment in order for students to feel safe and comfortable in an open and participatory environment. Innovation and creativity centers on the idea that when we give students ownership over their educational experiences and creations, they are more spontaneous and develop independent, creative, and innovative ideas. And attribute four is about sharing resources and ideas. When I mentioned the overlap of these attributes, this one stands out. Participatory technologies are essential for sharing ideas and resources. We need to have trust to share ideas, and sharing ideas makes us progress on our creative works. For the next four, there is the connected community, which highlights the global world we live in, where students can find and connect with others anywhere at any time. As educators, this allows a personal learning network for our students that extends beyond the classroom and even beyond students' physical locations. These communities can then encourage all of the other attributes. The learner generated attribute means empowering students to take leadership of their educational experiences, as well as the products they create. Reflective practice, as it suggests, are where students need to develop deep metacognitive skills in order to reflect on what it is they are learning. And a large component of those skills is developed by attribute eight, peer review. Such a connected community that is tagging, sharing resources, and providing critiques and encouragement elevates the entire experience to truly create a participatory open pedagogical practice. Hegarty focused much on what we used to call web 2.0 tools, such as wikis and blogs, but really it is any socially constructed media that allows students to participate in the session before, during, and after. They can feel free to access, create, and share the content. They can also reuse, remix, redistribute, and revise the four R's of open. This all sounds great, you may say, but how do the attributes fit into a class, especially in a single session library workshop? This next section will detail how each of these can be applied to a one-shot session. First, it's always good to take stock for what you and your institution has access to. What we had in terms of open technology were Jamboards, PowerPoint, and other Google Drive technologies, polls everywhere, and Mentimeter for surveys and quick interactives when we only had 30 minutes in a class, MindMeister for brainstorming, and Padlet. With all of these tools, we could come up with creative activities and interactive for students in the classroom. All of these 
participatory tools extend the classroom beyond the session and can create a community of practice whereby students are accessing the content later, continuing conversations and sharing ideas and resources. The anonymity of some of the tools allows for trust and openness, as does the ability to participate in the class in an easy and low stakes way. When we move beyond a demo to actually ask students questions, ask them to guide the process, then they start to open up and engage more deeply. These two simple examples here, just ask students which resources they want to dive deeper into. With more trust, you can get some creative ideas flowing. This Jamboard example gives a quick and easy icebreaker or hook to a session. Asking students right up front to participate sets the stage for openness and does allow for more innovation and creativity. One of the best ways I have found to share ideas and resources is through MindMeister. It's usually used as a brainstorming tool, as you can see here. You can also use other tools such as Coggle and Miro. Using a brainstorming tool allows students to collect information and ideas and see what their peers are doing. They can even connect and suggest resources and comment on each other's work. If you would like to see more, please use the QR code on the screen to view the results for one of the classes. In addition to synchronous materials we created, we also created various tutorials located on our LibGuides, especially on our e-learning guide. These were a way to connect with our students asynchronously and specifically to our e-learning based students who operate in an asynchronous environment. Our workshops throughout the past quarters were also recorded and posted to our websites to connect students who were unable to make the live session. The two examples here, one a Google slide and the other a Jamboard are providing an example of the students taking a lead in producing content for themselves and others in the class. Students were given a database like JSTOR, a few guiding questions, and then they had to make a slide to teach others about that database. In the Jamboard, you can see the questions. Students had the flexibility to add their answers and also help other students out by adding content and sharing ideas and resources. Having students think about why they're using the resources is important. You can use a variety of ways to do this, including a roundtable discussion with students, which is a fun and casual way to generate ideas. You can also use a Jamboard to ask the questions. Clearly, we're a fan of these, but it allows for students who may not feel comfortable talking out loud in classes to be heard and post their thoughts. I usually have students reflect on a few questions through polls everywhere which are, what resources will you use in your research? And as you can see here in the Jamboard, name specific resources for areas of research and how do you know it's a reliable source? The final attribute we have here is peer review. This final piece shows how all of Bronwyn Hedegaardy's attributes of open pedagogy practices blend together. Peer review is an important element of open pe pedagogy because it empowers students to become facilitators of the class as well as the instructor. Here students completed Google Slides about their own topic and then provided critique and feedback to other students. This was done via a participatory technology, ideas were shared, content was learner generated as trust was built via providing kind and constructive peer feedback. A community of researchers was built and students were able to reflect on their own research process and become more creative with their searches. Going forward, where to next? Going forward, we're planning on looking at various other technologies and learning more about asynchronous materials, including Sway. We will also be holding an interactive faculty workshop in which we'll be exploring more ways to connect with faculty and learn how we can fit more open pedagogical education initiatives into classes where appropriate. Thank you so much for viewing this presentation. If you have any ideas you want to share or questions you would like to ask, please feel free to send us an email.